Chapter 9 It happened, when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country, and in the lowland, and on all the shore of the great sea in front of Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of it, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also resorted to a ruse, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks on their donkeys, and wineskins, old and torn and bound up, and old and patched shoes on their feet, and old garments on them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and was become moldy. They went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him, and to the men of Israel, We are come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, What if you dwell among us, and how shall we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Joshua said to them, Who are you, and from where do you come? They said to him, From a very far country your servants are come, because of the name of the Lord your God, for we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Heshbon, and to Og king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provision in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and tell them, We are your servants, and now make a covenant with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go to you, but now, behold, it is dry and has become moldy. And these wineskins which we filled were new, and behold, they are torn. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. The men took of their provision and didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore to them. It happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. The children of Israel traveled and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Shepherah and Beeroth and Kiriath Jarim. The children of Israel didn't strike them, because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. All the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them, and let them live, lest wrath be on us, because of the oath which we swore to them. The princes said to them, Let them live. So they became woodcutters and drawers of water to all the congregation, as the princes had spoken to them. Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and there shall never fail to be of you bondservants, both woodcutters and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told your servants, how that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this thing. Now, behold, we are in your hand, as it seems good and right to you, do to us. So did he to them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they didn't kill them. That day Joshua made those woodcutters, and drawers of water for the congregation, and for the altar of the Lord to this day, in the place which he should choose. Psalm 140 For the Chief Musician a psalm by David. Deliver me, Yahweh, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man. Those who devise mischief in their hearts, they continually gather themselves together for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Viper's poison is under their lips. 
Yahweh, keep me from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have determined to trip my feet. The proud have hidden a snare for me. They have spread the cords of a net by the path. They have set traps for me. I said to Yahweh, You are my God. Listen to the cry of my petitions, Yahweh. Yahweh, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Yahweh, don't grant the desires of the wicked. Don't let their evil plans succeed, or they will become proud. As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be thrown into the fire, into miry pits from where they never rise. An evil speaker won't be established in the earth. Evil will hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that Yahweh will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. Psalm 141, a psalm by David. Yahweh, I have called on you. Come to me quickly. Listen to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be set before you like incense, the lifting up of my hands like the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, Yahweh, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Don't incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice deeds of wickedness with men who work iniquity. Don't let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it is kindness. Let him reprove me, it is like oil on the head. Don't let my head refuse it, yet my prayer is always against evil deeds. Their judges are thrown down by the sides of the rock. They will hear my words, for they are well spoken. As when one plows and breaks up the earth, our bones are scattered at the mouth of Sheol. For my eyes are on you, Yahweh the Lord. In you I take refuge. Don't leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snare which they have laid for me, from the traps of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall together into their own nets while I pass by. Chapter 3 They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's wife, will he return to her again? Won't that land be greatly polluted? But you have played the prostitute with many lovers, yet return again to me, says the Lord. Lift up your eyes to the bare heights and see, where have you not been lain with? By the ways have you sat for them, as an Arabian in the wilderness, and you have polluted the land with your prostitution and with your wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. Yet you have a prostitute's forehead, you refuse to be ashamed. Will you not from this time cry to me, My father, you are the guide of my youth. Will he retain his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, you have spoken and have done evil things, and have had your way. Moreover, the Lord said to me in the days of Josiah the king, Have you seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up on every high mountain, and under every green tree, and there has played the prostitute. I said after she had done all these things, she will return to me, but she didn't return, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. I saw when, for this very cause, that backsliding Israel had committed adultery. I had put her away, and given her a bill of divorce. Yet treacherous Judah, her sister, didn't fear. But she also went and played the prostitute. It happened through the lightness of her prostitution that the land was polluted, and she committed adultery with stones and with stocks. Yet for all this her treacherous sister Judah has not returned to me with her whole heart, but only in pretense, says the Lord. The Lord said to me, Backsliding Israel has shown herself more righteous than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north and say, Return, you backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not look in anger on you, 
for I am merciful, says the Lord, I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity, that you have transgressed against the Lord your God, and have scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Return, backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am a husband to you, and I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. It shall come to pass, when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, they shall say no more, The ark of the covenant of the Lord. Neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they miss it, neither shall it be made any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the stubbornness of their evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north, to the land that I gave for an inheritance to your fathers. But I said, How will I put you among the children? and give you a pleasant land, a good heritage of the host of the nations. And I said, You shall call me my father, and shall not turn away from following me. Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, house of Israel, says the Lord. A voice is heard on the bare heights, the weeping and petitions of the children of Israel, because they have perverted their way. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, you backsliding children. I will heal your backsliding. Behold, we are come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly in vain is the help that is looked for from the hills, the tumult on the mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. But the shameful thing has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. Let us lie down in our shame, and let our confusion cover us, for we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day, and we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as the light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, let's make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were very afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and don't be afraid. Lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. His disciples asked him, saying, Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered them, Elijah indeed comes first and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has come already, and they didn't recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted to. Even so, the Son of Man will also suffer by them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the baptizer. When they came to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers grievously, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him. The demon went out of him, and the boy was cured from that hour. 
Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why weren't we able to cast it out? He said to them, Because of your unbelief. For most assuredly I tell you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind doesn't go out except by prayer and fasting. While they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered up into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. They were exceedingly sorry. When they had come to Capernaum, those who collected the tax came to Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the tax? He said, Yes. When he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth receive toil or tribute, from their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Therefore the sons are exempt. But lest we cause them to stumble, go to the sea and cast a hook, and take up the first fish that comes up. When you have opened its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them for me and you.